So uh, it was very interesting how we started this study. It was quite some time back. And uh, it was, it was uh, um, uh, because of the hypoxic nature of the cancer, of, of pancreatic cancer. Uh, it is often uh, thought or even established to a certain extent that there, as I mentioned before, that there are certain genes that are activated during the, this hypoxic, hypoxic environment. Okay, and they drive the metastasis. So uh, we thought that we will take one of the most prominent, uh, uh, prominent genes that are induced by this kind of hypoxic environment called hypoxia inducible factor one alpha or HIF one alpha. And during that time, it is it was it used to be generally thought to be a, a tumor promoting tumor promoting gene. So the, uh, the understanding in the field during that time was that let's uh, study and try to understand how this HIF-1 alpha promotes cancer, pancreatic cancer. And if we can uh, have enough knowledge to stop it, uh, stop this gene from acting, then perhaps we have something, uh, you know, a druggable target for for pancreatic cancer where you know there's this unmet need so uh, that's how we also started we thought that you know we are a bunch of geneticists so we can we try to mimic these things in 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 cells applying genetic method we can inhibit particular genes so we thought that you know we will do this uh, in in a, in a mouse model that uh, recapitulates the human pancreatic cancer okay uh, it's we we use a term called in vivo so we are that's what we are good at we are good at mouse genetics or using mouse models for cancer human cancer so we thought that you know in in and there's a very good model called a kpc model uh, that uh, recapitulates this evolution of the human pancreatic cancer. And we thought it would be a simple experiment. We will just go ahead and inhibit HIF-1 alpha in the tumor, and we should see the tumor melt away. Uh, and uh, when we are doing that, we started getting just the opposite results. We saw that the tumors are becoming more and more aggressive. So uh, we were saying, what? This was not what we hypothesized. And I, as, I, as I mentioned, when your hypothesis is not being, you know, is being challenged, perhaps that's when things are more interesting than, and you can learn something than when, you know, your hypothesis is just being made. So we were, we went ahead and tried to understand that why is it, why is it happening that, you know, when we are inhibiting HIF-1 alpha, the tumors are becoming more and more uh, aggressive. So that was how we started and, you know, one thing led to the other. And uh, uh, what happened during this, uh, while we are doing this work? There are, are uh, there were there were reports from other labs, for example, Bill Kellen's lab in Dana Farber, who actually uh, is one of the pioneers of the HIF-1 alpha field. He came up with a report that you know the HIF-1 alpha is uh, actually a tumor suppressor in the uh, in the kidney and renal cell carcinoma. Uh, so while uh, and he showed very nicely that. Uh, in, in a subset of these cancers, there you can actually find deletions in HIF-1 alpha. So that was, to my knowledge, the first time HIF-1 alpha was actually thought to be, uh, uh, first time people looked at it as in a different light than what it was traditionally uh, being, uh, you know, thought of. So, uh, and uh, slowly other, other people in the field also uh, started reporting that, you know, there is this incongruency between uh, HIF-1 alpha expression and the patient outcome. So in some, uh, some uh, even in pancreatic cancer field, people started finding out that low amount of HIF-1 alpha can actually, patients with low amount of HIF-1 alpha showing more aggressive phenotype. So that gave more confidence to us that, you know, perhaps we, we are on something, something real. 
And the only thing that is left to do is to do a more thorough analysis and get the mechanistic basis of this, this phenomena. So that's how it evolved.